Sustainable Textiles on a Green Planet Virgin Wool versus Recycled Wool or what we call Eco Wool A study by Amrit Suswadeshi Recycling since 1957 The Virgin Wool Process The wool is shown off the sheep's back Next it is packed in its greasy form and sent to a mill for scouring or what we call washing so what is the need for scouring? Wool fiber, unlike cotton, contains considerable quantity of dirt, grass, burrs, etc. picked up by the sheep during grazing. It is also contaminated with excretia and natural grease discharged by the sheep. The natural grease also acts as a wool protectant. <coughs> so what are the components of greasy wool? Greasy wool typically consists of 30 to 45 percent grease between 5 and 15 percent dirt and vegetable matters and the wool portion is between 65 to 40 percent and in extreme cases as low as 35 percent. So what is the wool scarfing process? Wool is washed in hot water to remove the grease and dust from greasy wool and this process uses the following resources between 8 and 10,000 liters of water for every 100 kilos of wool washed. It also adds to the air pollution because a boiler is used to heat the water that is used for scouring. Lastly, a boiler is also used <coughs> to dry the wet wool which adds to the greenhouse gas emission. Now the wool that comes out of scouring is not totally clean. It still has contaminants like leaves, twigs, burrs which the sheep collects during grazing. This is removed in a process called carbonizing. In carbonizing, the wool is dipped in a solution of sulfuric acid and water to burn the vegetable matter present in the wool. This results in discharge of acidic water from the machine. Now just the dipping process does not burn the vegetable matter. The wool that has been dipped in the solution has to be dried and baked and we use a boiler to dry and bake the uh, wool and this results in additional air pollution. Now the carbonized wool that comes out after drying and baking has to be dusted and after dusting there's still acid contents in the wool and also some uh, charred matters are there in the wool. So once again the wool has to be washed to neutralize and this again adds to water pollution. The pollution continues because once the wool is wet for neutralizing it has to be dried and another boiler is used to dry the wet wool. Once the wool is dried, it is packed and sent to mills for further processing. <coughs> now the pollution does not end there. Since wool is a natural fiber and it's natural in color, it has to be either dyed or bleached to meet customer requirements. This further adds to air and water pollution. So how much pollution does the scouring process create? I'm just talking about the scouring process, not the additional dyeing of wool. So according to a study by Environment Australia, an environmental protection group, a single scouring line produces a pollution load equivalent to the pollution produced by 30,000 people. Finally, the new wool is ready for spinning and conversion into yarn. Let us compare the new wool process to the recycled wool process. In recycled wool, there is no need for scouring and carbonizing. And there is no or very little need for dyeing. So what is the recycled process? Old clothes are thrown by people. These are sorted into grades and colors. The sorted sweaters are recycled and are converted into yarn. So let's take a comparison between the production process. New wool versus recycled wool. New wool has to be scoured whereas there is no need for scouring recycled wool. New wool has to be carbonized and there is no requirement for carbonizing recycled wool. New wool has to be dyed. Recycled wool there's no or very little requirement for dyeing. 
Now the only time you would dye recycled wool is when you have a demand for a certain color and you don't have the color uh, with you in the recycle line and what you would do is over dye the sweaters to uh, meet your requirement. Typically in a recycled wool production line we dye between 15 to 20 percent of our production as compared to new wool where 100 percent has to be dyed. Pollution created comparison. The water pollution com crea uh, comparison is for every 100 tons production between new wool and recycled wool. For producing 100 tons of new wool, you need 10,000 kiloliters of water for scouring new wool, whereas in recycled wool, there's absolutely no requirement of water. For carbonizing new wool, you need an additional 6,000 kiloliters of water. There's no requirement of carbonizing recycled wool. For dyeing new wool, you need 14,500 kiloliters of water, whereas in recycled wool, because you're dyeing only 15 to 20 percent of the production, you need only 2,000 kiloliters of water. The total is 30,500 kiloliters of water for new wool production as compared to 2,000 kiloliters of water for recycled wool production, which is 93.5% lesser water used for every 100 tons of new wool versus 100, 100 tons of recycled wool. The air pollution comparison between new wool and recycled wool. For in new wool production, uh, the scouring emits about 20,000 units of greenhouse gases as compared to recycled wool where there is no greenhouse gas emission. Uh, in carbonizing, there are additional 20,000 units that are emitted in recycled wool, there is absolutely no emission. In dyeing of new wool, you emit about 29,000 units of uh, greenhouse gases as compared to recycled wool where it's only 4,000 units. So the total is 69,000 units versus 4,000 units, which is 94.2% lesser carbon dioxide emission. Energy consumed comparison between new wool and recycled wool. A typical wool scouring line which covers 4,000 kgs a day would require a 200 kilowatt connected load. Uh, whereas a recycle line, uh, typical recycling line which uh, recycles 4000 kgs a day would require only a 50 kilowatt connection. This is 75% lesser energy used. In conclusion, recycled wool or eco wool as we call it helps in reusing old material that might have been dumped into landfills has a 93.5% lesser water pollution impact, has a 94.2% lesser air pollution impact, uses 75% lesser energy and therefore has a smaller carbon footprint because energy uh, basically results in uh, carbon gases and uh, greenhouse gas emission, addresses PETA issues as wool is reclaimed from old clothes and is not off the sheep's back, Lastly, it is a cheaper and more economical product. Help us keep the planet clean and green. Thank you.